One day, while I was eating dinner at home, I heard a knock on the door. When I went outside, I saw a middle-aged woman holding a small doll. There was something creepy about that doll. Its hair was a few short strands, its face was frowning and grotesque, and its skin was as realistic as a real person's skin. The lady looked at me and she screamed, Give me something to eat! Anything! Uh, I'm a vegetarian, so the only thing I can give you is bread. Would you like that too? She nodded her head, and I brought her the bread. Then she snatched the bread and stuffed it into the mouth of the doll she was holding. The doll's mouth was quite large and seemed to have a lot of space inside. It was as if the bread was being sucked into it. I looked at her with a confused expression, and she said, She eats everything. She'll probably eat your face off, too. (laughs) Then she put her ear to her doll's mouth, and after a moment she suddenly said, She wants meat. She says the bread is not delicious. I was horrified and just closed the door. Then she shouted from outside the door, Babies need to eat protein to grow taller. A few days later, there was another knock on the door, and when I looked out the window, she was standing at my front door, holding her doll. The doll looked different. It appeared to have grown in size, and its hair had grown longer. The frown was less prominent than before, but it was still a creepy face. I was unsure whether it was the same doll as before or a different doll, and I wanted to look at it more closely. I opened the door and handed her a sandwich. She fed the sandwich to her doll. I looked closely at the doll. Teeth that weren't there before had grown, and it looked as if the doll was chewing the sandwich. I thought to myself, is this a doll designed to have jaws that move automatically? Is it just my imagination? I felt an inexplicable, unpleasant feeling rush over me, and I closed the door. The president of the company that made that doll must have been controlled by an evil spirit, I muttered to myself as she continued to feed the doll outside the house. From that day on, she kept coming to my house, but I stopped answering the door because looking at that doll gave me goosebumps all day. After a few days, I was used to ignoring her knocks. Then, one night, I woke up startled when I heard a child's angry voice outside the front door. I checked the time. It was 3 a.m., and I was irritated. I carefully looked out the window. In the darkness, I saw the woman standing, holding the hand of a doll that was bigger than before. This time, the doll was standing on the ground. The doll's face had a severe frown. The woman knocked on the door and screamed, My child wants to eat soup with meat right now! Then she tried to open the window of my house. Damn, I'm a vegetarian! I was so angry that I screamed at her, and then she disappeared. The next day, as I was passing through the neighborhood, I noticed a police line had been placed on my neighbor's house. I asked a local resident standing there what was going on, and what he said was shocking. You know the woman who carries a doll and begs every day? She killed the man who lived in this house. However, the method of murder was a bit bizarre. The man's stomach was cut open with the doll's fingernails. The police said the doll's fingernails were sharp as knives. What's even more shocking is that she made soup with the flesh of the man's corpse. When the police asked why she did such a thing, she said that her baby's favorite food was human soup. He pointed to the doll that was lying at the scene as he explained. The doll was so heavy that when the police cut open its stomach, they found a bunch of soup inside. However, they said there were things inside the doll's stomach that looked like intestines, and they were as realistic as real intestines. The police said they couldn't figure out where the doll was made. They said they had never seen such a doll in their lives, and that it was made of an unknown material other than plastic. I froze on the spot. I looked at the doll. It was bigger than when it came to my house the night before. Its hair was long and thick. Its teeth and fingernails were like blades and it had a faint smile on its face. I quickly returned home, and for several days I had terrible nightmares about the doll eating my flesh. I later learned the woman's story. She was homeless at the time, and someone had left the doll next to her, so she carried it around with her, thinking it was her baby. People thought she was crazy, but no one has figured out who made the doll. 
who gave it to her, or how it grew.